Hello everybody, it's Mario Hernandez from Media Current. In this week's Learning Bits tutorial, I'll show you how you can add a CSS class to your page or component using JavaScript. The idea here is to use JavaScript only to be able to access the CSS class or add the CSS class to your page and then do the rest of the work using CSS. So what we have here is a card with an image and a title. And the idea here is that when we press the title or the little down arrow that you see there, the card will expand and it will show us additional content. As you can see here, as I click on the title, anywhere on the title, the card expands and collapses. If we inspect the code, we can see that we have the card component here with the class of card and there is additional markup here. There's a title. And as I click the title of the card, you can see that a class of is expanded is toggled on the card. In addition to that, we have an aria attribute in the button of the card, which is aria expanded. And this is something that we are using to let screen readers know for accessibility purposes when the card is open or closed. So let's take a look at how this was built. If I look at the HTML here on our page, you can see that we have the card component built here. At the top of the card, the main wrapper uh, has got a class of card. And as we scroll down, we can see that there is an ARIA attribute of ARIA expanded uh, set to false by default. This allows us to ensure that by default the card is closed uh, to allow to announce that to screen readers. Let's write some JavaScript here so that we can start implementing the functionality of the card. First, we are going to write uh, use strict, which is the best practices to ensure that any variables that we want to use on our code are first declared. And we're declaring the variable of card by doing a const. You can also use var or let depending on which flavor or JavaScript you are using. And we are setting the value of the card variable to document that query selector. And we are passing the class of the card itself, which is card. Then we're doing the same for the button. And in this case, we are also doing a document query selector and we are passing the class of the button so that we have access to both the card and the button. And when we console log this, you can see that now we see the full card component available to us in the console. And if we do this for the button, we can also see that we have access to that. Next, we are going to write what is called a callback function with the class of button toggle. And this function is going to, on its own, doesn't do anything, uh, but it will be evoked by when we click the button when we click the button, we're going to call that function to do something, right? So for now, we're going to leave this function empty, but we are then going to add an event listener on the button. And this can be any event. It could be a scroll. It could be hover. In this case, we are adding a click event on the button, meaning that when the button is clicked, then we are going to pass or call that callback function that we just created above. So let's test it by first passing just a static text message that says you clicked the button. So we're going to save this when the page reloads. If I click the button, you can see that in our console, we see the message, you click the button. If I click the button multiple times, the same message comes up as you can see the number there increasing. So this is working great. But now let's add actual code so that uh, our car can function the way we want it. So first, we are going to, uh, on the card, pass the class list method, and we are going to toggle a class of is expanded. This class name can be anything you want. To me, this makes sense. It gives me the sense of the state of the card. When the button's clicked, I'm adding the class of is expanded to the card wrapper. So this tells me that now the card is open, and now through CSS, I can add the respective functionality that I, I want to add to the card. In this case, open it and close it. So how do we do this with CSS? Pretty much uh, 
our job with JavaScript is done here to an extent, but it's pretty much done. That's all we wanted to do, right? Add a class to the card. Uh, now that we have that class, let's take a look first. Um, notice that the way I have set up the title of the card, uh, there's an H2, and inside the H2 we have a button, and then the text or the title of the card is inside the button. The reason I did this is so that we have the entire title act as a toggle for the card. This makes it easier to click on the title, especially on mobile devices where the space is limited. And then here with CSS, uh, the one thing that I am doing is we are using the card content wrapper, which is the wrapper that holds all the content of the card. And by default, we're setting its max height to 75 pixels. This will ensure that nothing beyond 75 pixels will be shown by default. However, um, just uh, doing the 75 pixels won't do the trick. We need to set the overflow property to hidden, as you can see here, uh, so that nothing else on the card shows up. And then we're adding a transition on the maximum height property, meaning that every time the maximum height changes, uh, a transition will occur. So notice how if I comment out the overflow in the even though I have 75 maximum height for the content, the content of the car still shows. So that's why we need the overflow hidden property set to hidden <laughs> so that uh, no extra content shows up on the card unless we want to. So once that is done, then what I'm doing is I'm appending the class of is expanded to the content wrapper, meaning the ampersand that you see there is basically saying, go outside of this card underscore underscore content wrapper, go outside of it and look to see if there's anything up there with the class of is expanded. And if there is, then increase the maximum height of the content. If I use 100% as the maximum height, you can see that although the card shows and hides the content, there isn't a sliding effect that I like to see on that content. And that is because 100% is not the best way to go about this. What I like to do instead is set up a value of 650 pixels. Basically, the value that you want to specify here is a value that is way larger than the content that you expect um, so that when the maximum height changes, uh, then you see the sliding effect on the card. I'm also now displaying the toggle uh, error that I had there, which I had it hidden by default. And also uh, there I'm adding a transition that will react on the transform property of the button. And I'm doing the same trick here with the button. I'm saying on the button, if there is a class of is expanded somewhere above the button, then rotate the little arrow. And because we're adding a transition, uh, the rotating uh, looks like animated, right? It's not just moving up, down, up, down, but this actually is actually rotating as you can see here. So these are little tricks that you can use um, with CSS by using transitions and transform and rotate. Um, so, so that part is done and you can see that the card is working great. The one thing though is that notice that the ARIA attribute is expanded does not change at all. So the next thing we want to do is we want to uh, make that update because we want to make sure that screen readers know when the card is open or closed and we are doing that using the ARIA attribute. So we're going to write a quick if statement here saying that if the button's ARIA attribute ARIA expanded is set to true, when we click the button, then we are going to change that to false, right? And Otherwise, if the RE attribute is set to false when we click the button, then we are going to change its value to true. This is similar to what we did with the class. We're basically toggling the value of this ARIA attribute. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and save this, refresh. And if we now click on the card, first of all, you see that we have the card and we have the ARIA attribute here. Um, if we click now the card, you can see that not only are we able to add that class, and because of CSS, we can see the sliding effect of the card, but also our ARIA attribute now is changing from true to false and vice versa as we click the card.
Hope this was helpful. Hope to see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.